He's like an adopted Yorkshireman, a midfield legend at Leeds, a management career beginning at Bradford. But the heart also beats strongly for the other club he managed twice. A sense of joy at Swansea's transformation since he was there two decades ago. Well, Terry, Bradford against Swansea in the League Cup final. Perfect fixture for you, this one. Oh, it is, yeah. You know, uh, I've been manager here twice and manager there twice. And uh, both good experiences. Um, but on the day, I don't know which way I'll go. I might go for the minnows and just hope they do it. Because this city, Bradford, needs something. But Swansea, you know, I wish I had a season ticket down there. Watch them every week. You, you wouldn't have thought after the job that Brendan did, that Loudrup could come in and just kick on a little bit more. He's done absolutely brilliant, I think. Who are you going to be cheering? Who have you got the softest spot for? I've got the softest spot for Bradford because of all, everything that's happened here, you know, uh, the fire especially, you know, so... I don't live, well, Leeds, so it's only you know, 15 miles away. And uh, to see them do what they've done, is extraordinary. Even in triumph, especially in triumph, they'll never forget the darkest day in Bradford's history. May 11th, 1985, when a fire broke out in the main stand at Valley Parade. Yorath, who was player coach at the time, was there, and so were his family. And we can see the flames going up into the air there, and people are running around, they're running around beside us, they're running around all around us, and people are saying, get onto that pit, let's get all those people out of there. I saw my family, uh, my wife and my kids, straight away, <clears throat> bath my son. And I didn't see my mother and father. So I, I went back in and got to the window where the office was, and the flames were about 10 yards away. And I was looking for my son, because he always used to go in half time to get sweets and a Coke or something. Anyway, I thought, he's not here, he must be outside. So I went past the director's room and I just said to them, the fire is caught hold, you'll all have to get out. So then I went in the player's lounge and said to them, get out. And uh, when I came out of the player's room again, the directors were still there. So I said to them, I use a bit of language, you've got to get out. And as I did it, the door blew in. That's when they moved. So when I went, went back again, still trying to find my son, the flames were up to the window. So I went back to the players' lounge, threw a chair through the window and just jumped out. Um, when I got outside, the sights were horrible. Horrible. You know, the, the first fellow I can always, always remember him, he was old, he had his arms across his chest like that, and it was just white, where he'd been burnt. Later, the full scale of the disaster would hit home. 56 people died in the fire, 270 were injured. We eventually, all the players and the staff, went to the pub at the top of the road. And that's when you saw the policeman coming out with his hair on fire and that. The chairman was walking down the road and he said to me, they say um, there's five or six dead. I said, chairman, there's miles more than that. Because I'd been into the ground and they were laying him out there. And uh, when we came down the road to our office, a policeman came with us and he said, um, don't look to your left. Well, what do you do? You look to your left. And it was horrible. Never forget it. Even now, if I smell fire, the first thing I think of, it was an awful, awful day. Yorath did find all his family safe and well that day, but seven years later, he would suffer the most unimaginable loss. His son Daniel died at the age of 15 from an undetected heart condition. People who die from the, the disease, cardiomyopathy, whenever I pick a newspaper up, and I can see straight away what's gonna happen. They always say he was a very fit young man. And that's what they said about Dan, a very fit young man. I just hear one minute gone the next. And you said, didn't you, that it, it, it tore your family apart? Yeah, it did, yeah. I just became cocooned 
having a drink, watching football all the time. Probably I should have gone for some counselling or something, but uh, I didn't, being obstinate. You know, I thought I'd get through it myself. But it's very difficult because, especially when it's, it's still raw, when people come up to you and ask you, and you, you've got a tear in your eye and that. It's still raw now, but, because uh, you never expect your, your kids to go before you. Like, 15, good footballer. As you, you say, it, it, I know it should cause heartache, but it probably cost, caused a lot more because of my attitude to it. I didn't really want to speak to anybody. Alcohol helped numb the pain, but Yorath didn't want to stop working. He lost his job as Wales manager after they narrowly missed out on the 94 World Cup finals, then went to manage Lebanon after a short stop at Cardiff City. He even managed at Margate in Kent in his last football role, but never really settled anywhere for long. So perhaps the heart never truly left South Wales or Yorkshire and the two clubs he'll watch at Wembley next weekend. It's amazing, really, if, if you look at this club and then you look at Swansea, both clubs have had a kind of, in modern history anyway, a similar kind of getting to the top, dropping out. Bradford the same, getting the Premier, dropping out. It's really the working man's cup, isn't it? There's so many thousand for me, I think it's 30,000 30, going down. So where do you think the game then, Terry, will be won and lost? What's going to determine this game? Um, obviously, Swansea's passing, which is a joy to watch. Uh, and the only way I can see Bradford winning is a set piece. But we all know what happens in the cup. You know, you know I played in a famous one, Leeds against Sunderland. Not, you know, we were odds on certainties, got beat. I think if I was the manager here now, although you want to do fantastic, you want to do well, I'd be just saying to the players, enjoy it. Because in those big games, you can be absolutely shattered before you go out there because of your nerves. If you can enjoy it, then you'll have done well.